Hi everyone and welcome to Real Life Talks. I'm your host Yvonne Heath, author of the book Love Your Life to Death and founder of the I Just Showed Up movement. So I'm so excited to have my friend Lagaya Birch here with me today. I said that correctly. Oh yeah, didn't I? absolutely. Thank goodness. <laughs> Lagaya, um, it's so wonderful that we, we connected in a very special way, but I'll talk about that. But I love, I'm going to read this little, I said, Lagaya, what do you do? I'm a community innovator, a community ally, advocate, and voice for some of the most vulnerable and marginalized of our society. Mm -hmm. They're often the ignored and silenced populations. <gasps> that just gave me chills. It yeah. really did. And and so I just read that and I, I loved you immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pleased to have you on the show. And so what does this mean? <laughs> yeah, so what thank you mean? so much for having me on the show. My and, pleasure. you know, I think, um, you know, the relationship that we've forged has been really, um, really great because, mm -hmm. you know, our, our, lines are, our lives are in parallel. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I felt it was really important to just show up for those that don't have a voice, right? Just um, show up. You know, because I can. Because, because I'm in a place where, you know, I can create a voice for them, use their words, and tell a story to those that are willing to listen, right? And so um, I've used that as a vehicle to create change locally. So I, you know, I worked uh, in various places for the last 30 years, all in healthcare. Mm -hmm. and you know, just realized I have to do something different. I have to find my passion again. I have to, you know, uh, do what Lagaya does, right? So yes. my name means joy. And I really, love that. I really just wanted to bring joy, mm -hmm. you know, to people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so I went about this about two years ago. I started out on this journey and it's been great and there's no turning back and I wouldn't do anything differently you know amazing yeah so going back so in healthcare what uh, what roles did you have in healthcare sure. uh, all of those roles were predominantly leadership roles um, you know but I started my career helping those living with HIV at the mm -hmm. time uh, you know in the 80s um, you know some of my friends were dying and so we didn't understand why or how, right? and, sure. but we all had to respond. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was absolutely terrifying. And so with that, you know, also realized that women were part of the untold story at that time. And so really focused a large portion of my career on women's health and and uh, women's sexuality. And, and then from there, went into primary care and community health and finished my career uh, working for the government. And that was all really with the intent to go back to the community and be able to support the community. So write those grant proposals mm -hmm. and uh, get some money through the doors of organizations. Amazing. And you were a social worker somewhere I in all of that? Yeah, yeah, social I social worker. Social in the mix worker. in I'm there. still registered with the college. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, I still do some consulting on the side mm -hmm. and all of that consulting is really with organizations I'm passionate about and so I pick and choose sure. and uh, you know do things that um, helps my heart and soul versus you know I love just that. eating away at it so yes yeah and isn't it so interesting when I mean, when I was in healthcare, I said we need to do something differently and sometimes it's taking that leap yeah and being the voice for change uh, that you want to be and it is incredibly fulfilling to be of service, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I, every day I feel happy. Yes. You know, I wake up with a smile on my face when I'm going to work, right? And so and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, isn't it? absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, so we met because we were both uh, very fortunate here in Aurelia to be TED Talk speakers yeah. at the uh, inaugural, the first TED Talk uh, held here. And it was what a great experience. It was absolutely. Uh, you know, life changing for me. Yeah. That is wow. Yeah, that, yeah it, it is uh, beautiful. But what I love, and I, I rewatched your TED Talk, which I encourage everyone to watch her TED Talk. By the way, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, but I love that. Like, first of all, you were you. Your whole TED Talk was about um, our our transgender community members mm -hmm. and the lack of accessibility mm -hmm. to health care. Yeah, and but you are not transgender. No. <laughs> Why no. did you choose this? Like it was, it was a, an important conversation. Yeah. And you were doing this 
why? Why did you choose that topic? Yeah, so I chose the topic because I have a number of trans friends mm -hmm. and, you know, again, uh, their lives have been um, challenged in various ways. And, you know, as a lesbian growing up, you know, not far from this community, mm -hmm. um, my life was pretty privileged. You know, I went to post-secondary school. I was able to live at home. I never got kicked out. Right. I never lacked for jobs. You know, I wasn't kicked out of where I was living because I was a lesbian. So nice to hear a positive yeah, <laughs> coming yeah, yeah. out story, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I absolutely. mean, truly, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, with that, I, I felt it was important to help or, or assist or advocate on behalf of those who are not in that situation mm -hmm. and the reality is is you know trans people um, have been part of the LGBTQ community for ever mm -hmm. and um, you know I thought it was important to to create something um, that would assist them right and so uh, you know have devoted the last few years to really ensuring that trans health care needs are met locally uh, wrote the funding proposal that was uh, for um, for permanent funding uh, for a trans health yes. uh, service out of the Kuchiching Family Health Team, and so you know applying those skills that I learned and mm. and, and benefiting the community, and so that health service has totally taken off. We have trans folks from Simcoe and Muskoka all attending there, and I hope it just grows. Um, you know, and I'm hoping that that has helped to improve the lives of some of the people who are going through there. Doesn't that feel so good? I always tell people, I said, I'm a do-gooder and I don't even think it's because I'm a nice person. It just <laughs> feels so good, doesn't yeah. it? When you like, you were part of that change. Yeah. So people who are, are trans community members, is that politically correct? Yeah, See, I always I, I ask. I want to make sure um, have access to care in their community. Yeah, which is where they should have it. Just like <laughs> of anyone course, else. Just right? like anyone else. Yeah, just like anyone else. And yes. so we know that when people can get their health care needs, whether it's you, me, one of my trans friends, mm -hmm. if they can get their health care needs met right in their hometown, they're going to do better. Right. And who of wouldn't? Of course. Right. Who wouldn't? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love in a previous conversation we were talking mm -hmm. because somebody said, well, you know, because you are gay, les you are a lesbian, you're mm -hmm. out, you would understand mm -hmm. transgender issues. Yeah. No. What? <laughs> Absolutely what? not. Why so would that said, be? I'm, I'm, I'm not trans, right? No. You know, that would be like saying I can understand um, what a black person's experience right. is or an indigenous person. and. And I can absolutely empathize. I can absolutely right. be an ally, but I could never fully put myself in the shoes of those individuals, just like I can't put myself in the shoes of a trans person. But I can assist them with everything that I know. As an ally. Yes, as, as an a ally. voice for change. Yes. And and that's what you choose to be for mm -hmm. for all all community members who are marginalized, who are struggling. And I, and I love that about you because mm -hmm. um, I've also had uh, Liz Westcott yep. on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us about your involvement with yeah. Liz. Oh yeah, this is, um, this is an exciting <laughs> time for me. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I had the pleasure of meeting Liz a couple of years ago um, before I really got involved with Green Haven Women's Shelter. So um, that's the shelter here that's the shelter here in Aurelia for, um, and it's been in existence for over 25 years right for abused yeah facing for, uh, yeah. abuse yeah, yeah. Women so and women in domestic violence situations right. women and their children mm -hmm. and um, when I met Liz I didn't even know there was a shelter in town I had actually been on boards of some of the other shelters in and around this area had right. no idea there was a shelter in Aurelia mm -hmm. and so I I said I had no idea mm -hmm. you know and I had worked in the shelter system in Toronto so I you know I was like I thought I was you know a person in the know yeah, or, yeah, yes, exactly. I know. and so um, you know Liz told me what they were planning to do that they were planning to build a new building and I said you know I'd love to help you and um, didn't know how that was gonna unfold right um, but what I'm happy to say is that I was able to 
raise enough dollars to furnish their whole kitchen. Yes. And so we just ordered the, all the new appliances for <gasps> oh, the kitchen. Oh, that's so exciting. Uh, the fridges, the stove. I'm in the midst of ordering the tables and chairs and, and getting all the plates, glasses, etc. Um, and so the new shelter will be able to house uh, or have 15 rooms and yes. depending on the makeup of the families, you know, they'll, they'll be placed there. And uh, yeah, so the kitchen will be named Lagaya Joy. Like, That's... excuse me, the <laughs> kitchen is named after you. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Really because- It's beautiful. It's I love beautiful. it. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, because really everything happens in the kitchen, just like any of our homes. Right. You know, the good and the bad, the ugly, it all happens right mm -hmm. there in, in the kitchen. And so really I wanted to be able to spread joy, right? And um, I hope for the most part that what the, the family's experience in that kitchen is about joy, whether yes. it's the pleasure of trying a new food sure. or the pleasure of a great Company conversation. sitting around yeah. the table, yes. and. As I also said to Liz, I wish that a shelter was not necessary. Yeah. I would, let's eradicate the word abuse from yeah. our vocabulary, um, but that's not the reality. And and so to have, I, I know part of the what they wanted with the shelter was so that they could have classes or, or do things all yeah. there because I know the last space was very crowded and yeah. small. And so this is Greenhaven Shelter in Aurelia, and they're continuing to fundraise. They are continuing to hint, fundraise. Hint. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, you know, there's always a way to get involved. And yep. I, I say to people, we often think, well, if I can't give a lot of my time or a lot of my money, mm -hmm. I don't do anything. You know what? Go give five dollars. Yeah. Go. I I have stopped when they Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. They were building a house in Huntsville. Yeah. I walked in one day. I said, I have forty minutes. What can I do? And I mean, I brought out all the garbage and I tidied a bunch of stuff. Yeah. We can all do something. Yeah. Right. We can all, we all have skills. We yes. all have sitting and listening and having a cup of coffee with someone. Yeah. That yeah. can make a difference for that someone. That can make a Huge. difference. Yes. 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 Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, right? So, you know, my big thing about retirement and, and giving back to the community was just that, right? How can I make a dent somehow, make change locally that's going to benefit people living around me, right? And if it benefits people living around me, it's going to benefit me and my family. Right. Well, right? It's going to make life living here for my children so much more enticing. More safe, more rich, more... And, yeah. and to teach that. So you have two children. I have two kids. How old are your children? So I have twins, a boy, girl, <gasps> Liam, Ryan. Um, so. Why didn't... What? <laughs> I have twins. Do you know this? Yes. Boy and a girl? Why yes. didn't I know this? I saw this? your picture on Facebook. Oh, they, how wonderful. They've grown up, oh, your they're... twins. <laughs> Gigantic. Yes. So, how old are the twins? So they're seven. They're turning seven. Oh, that's so yeah, cute. on the twenty seventh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they're busy. They're yeah. active, and yeah. um, you know, but I want them to be good people in this in this world, right? Um, you know, I want them to know that uh, not everyone's life is privileged. And, Absolutely. Um, that it's our responsibility to make it right. Everyone is born into the place they are born with the color of skin that they have. That's mm -hmm. that's out of our control. And mm -hmm. I do teach that to my children as well. Mm -hmm. We live in Canada. Yeah. We live in Muskoka, you know, and and yes, some people have the latest iPhone. I don't know what number are we at 99 now <laughs> and you have a, you know, you have a, a second hand phone and yeah. I love all my beautiful outfits from, as I say to the boutique, I go to the boutique value village Yeah, and we are privileged. Know that 150, no matter how much money we have. Yeah. yeah. Right. And there's nothing greater. I think that for a lot of us, the mental health issues mm -hmm. and anxiety are from not doing what we can do to be honest. Yeah. Right. Because, there is nothing more rewarding mm. than making a difference in someone's life. Yeah, absolutely. It's an extraordinary feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, you know, so I just recently had a family reunion, saw my cousin, haven't seen my cousin for a few years. And she looked at me and she said, my God, you look amazing. And I said, it's because I'm happy. And I'm nice and I do good <laughs> things. That's why I look amazing. <laughs> you know, right? but... You know, it was important for me to find happiness. 
and that was about creating change in my life mm. and really about uh, creating that voice you know for those that have been silenced mm. and so um, that's what I've endeavored to do for the last two years. So the last two, so so do you, you still have a day job or you just have a cape and you go yeah, around doing all these wonderful <laughs> superhero things? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, you know, I just recently started going back to consulting, mm -hmm. um, but really those have been through invitation. So, you know, colleagues or friends have approached me and just said, can you help with whatever? And, um, you know, so happy to help. Yes. Right. But a large portion of, of those earnings are going back to the community, right? Um, you know, to support Greenhaven or to support other things. And so um, it's really a recycled mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. uh, but what has been more exciting about these consulting pieces is that they are change elements, right? And so uh, the most recent one um, that people might hear about is uh, I will be working with United Way Simcoe Muskoka to oh. provide their training on their community impact funding. So this community oh, impact funding is focused on reducing poverty and increasing inclusion. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So really, any community organization that is a charity organization can apply for this fund. Uh, it's really a collaborative project, and so three or more organizations should partner up mm -hmm. and you know create a project that's going to help reduce poverty and increase inclusion. So it's those mm. kinds of things that I'm working on, right? Things that I think are oh. very powerful and transformative for the lives of people that live with us. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Reducing poverty, increasing, increasing inclusion. inclusion. Like I just hear that and it's it's music. It's I know. beautiful because it doesn't matter who mm -hmm. our, our, our marginalized community members are, whether you know someone living in abusive situation, mm -hmm. someone who is transgender and isolated, um, our indigenous community members, yeah. uh, and it doesn't matter the answer is all reducing poverty mm -hmm. and increasing inclusion. Yeah. I, I want to be a part of that. Just, I'm just letting you know, just as a side <laughs> note. Did okay. You, yes, put my name down for something. Um, that is so extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So so you have, my goodness, you have, so not everybody, I mean, mm -hmm. most people have to carry on and have yep. their day job and they have kids and, and it's a busy, busy life. Absolutely. It's a busy life, but here's the thing I try to ha um, explain to people or encourage mm -hmm. them half an hour uh, half an hour of your whole family a week a, a month whatever you can do yep right because imagine if everybody did that yeah so I think there's lots of ways people can give back whether that's at their churches or whether that's mm -hmm. at you know the local food bank or at their kids school you know, I think it is really about just like anything else you do in your calendar, you know, putting aside that 30 minutes. Yes. And schedule devoting, it in. Yep. You know, even if it was two hours supporting uh, young professionals through the United Way mentorship program. Right. Yes. And, um, so there's lots of ways to give back. I think it's really about prioritizing that. Mm -hmm. And I think if we did that kind of thing, we'd live in a much different world, a world you know where there's less or no conflict yes right yeah oh my goodness that's so oh that's just it's so important mm -hmm. and again i think i think we become overwhelmed with all the hardships in the world mm -hmm. and how many how many people are need something and 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 the the connection and the collaboration yeah and the community spirit is is the answer yes Right? Yeah. And every single person can make a difference. And sometimes kindness and compassion makes the difference. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So you have, so you are also uh, very passionate about um, Indigenous, being an Indigenous, which you're that, what is your heritage? Yeah. So I'm, I'm half Filipino, mm. half British. Right. Yeah. So, so that's not, that's not your background either. No, no. <laughs> you're just, yeah. you're just passionate about helping everyone, which I love. Yeah. And so I know that you're going to, are you going to BAMF? Is yeah, that, I, yeah. So I have the privilege of going to the BAMF Center and going through their Truth and Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. 
and mm. um, leadership program. So I'll be there October 6th through 10th, wow. learning from some indigenous leaders about how best to, you know, be an ally mm -hmm. um, in this world. Uh, and how to learn from some of the traditional teachings that um, have been shared over the centuries right. with some of our indigenous uh, communities. So I'm really excited about that, that yes, opportunity. How did that come about? You have all of yeah, these other so, things going on. Um, I met Erin Dixon when we were at TED Talks, mm, yes. and so we talked about some of the projects we've been doing um, with Indigenous communities and talked about mental health And um, at the time, and currently I'm, I'm still working on a dementia project with our five Indigenous... Of course you are, Magaya, <laughs> yes, dementia as well, yeah. yes, okay. Uh, with our five Indigenous communities, and so, oh. um, you know, what, what we don't know as a society is... Um, First Nation people have a higher incidence and a younger incidence of dementia than mainstream oh. populations. So okay. um, signs this. of dementia will present in their 40s and 50s. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so could you imagine this. a young 40-year-old mm. vibrant person all of a sudden their life is transforming and no one understands mm. why, my right? Goodness. And really this is the result of colonization, PTSD, a number of other social factors that might have impacted families, but like mm -hmm. any sort of change, you know, it takes a century for that transformation to happen. Yes. So even if people right now are living a good life, it's still going to take decades, generations of undoing. Mm -hmm. of undoing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we finally understood that, you know, because we didn't undo quick enough, mm -hmm. um, you know, this community is going to be, indigenous communities are going to be very hard hit by a yes. number of diseases. Yeah. Wow. So in all this incredible work that mm -hmm. you do, you you are certainly facing and dealing with a lot mm -hmm. of people in crisis, mm -hmm. a lot of grief. Um, sure. And are you, as my, you know, I just showed up movement, you yeah. need to just show up for yourself yeah. first. How do you, how do you have your, how do you have that self-preservation that you mm -hmm. just don't go down the rabbit hole? Because yeah. it, it can be challenging. I mean, I hear, grief stories every day as well. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's a lot of people stay away from these hard, sad stories because they're, oh, I can't do that. It's too much or I'm sure. not a professional. So first of all, we don't all need professionals. We need everybody yeah. to be the change. But how can we also help people to self-preserve in, yeah. in the midst of all that grief? So self-preservation, you know, is absolutely um, something I have to remind myself of. Yes, yep. now you have your bracelet. Yes, so that's and it. so I can remind myself often. <laughs> you have um, to. You know, but some of the things I really do, um, so I love to cook mm. and love to eat. And so part of my therapeutic piece yes. is cooking that meal before the end of the day. So cooking dinner for the family. I would and love you to come over and do your therapy <laughs> because I don't have that gene. But anyways, carry on. And, yes. And so cook dinner and, mm -hmm. you know, we, we try majority of the work to sit down together. Yes. Um, you know, if, if my partner or I aren't there, then my kids are sitting with their grandma mm -hmm. or, or someone else, mm -hmm. babysitter. Um, but really sit down and take that time. So that's one thing. And then, um, you know, when needed, go back into nature. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. So go back into nature and, uh, you know, breathe that in. Mm -hmm. And I'm just rereading parts of Michael Jones's book right now about the awakening and yes. just, you know, how nature can be so enriching oh. and so transformative and really help us understand this world, right? And so, um, so do that and then you know my partner is is great to me yes and that so, is also wonderful um you know have a very strong relationship mm -hmm. and so you know i can thank you partner yeah <laughs> i can i can rely on her yes for, for a, a lot and certainly to to be a sounding board but you know i've always maintained having um peer mentors, mm -hmm. right? Whether that's yes. work related mm -hmm. or whether that's really, you know, a friend who isn't afraid to say, Lagaya, yeah, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Lagaya, sure. you screwed up. Um, or Lagaya, that was awesome. Right. Yes. Um, or you're not taking care of yourself. Yeah. 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 All you of know, that. And, 
And you need that kind of person. You need somebody Absolutely. who's going to be authentic and real with you. Um, you know, because you don't want a mentor who's like, yeah, you're great. You're oh, great, you're great no great. matter what you do. Yeah. You're just so wonderful. Yeah. I know that's what moms are for. But yeah, <laughs> but, you need, but you need reality check yeah. in people yeah. as well. Yeah. And there's two very important things that you said that I would just like to make sure people understand is <laughs> To have supportive people in your environment, in your surrounding, in your mm -hmm. circle is critical. Mm -hmm. But I do believe it, it is also, as I, I share takeaways, and number mm -hmm. six is find your post. And that is something that you can turn to mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter when, and maybe when people aren't available or you need to be alone, but you need something. Yeah. My post is also nature because you can, I just go out like I'm mother nature and you like, I just, it's like nature just feeds you. Yeah. It's, it's alive, right? Everything yeah. and the birds and the trees and the breeze and the sun and, and going for a, a walk or a yeah. hike. And that's something you can always turn to. So that is a really important piece as well. And checking in, right? Mm -hmm. Keep, like, how am I doing? And when you need a break, yeah. right? Because you, you just show up. For so many people, and you are making a beautiful difference, mm -hmm. which also feeds your soul. Yes. However, your heart and your soul. However, sometimes it can get overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think the other reminder that I have constantly is I can say no. Right. Right. And, that's and that important. was a, that was a big learning piece for me because mm -hmm. I I was terrible at it. Sure. Right. You want to do everything for everybody, yeah. but then you can't be the best version yeah. of you, so you're not being of service. Absolutely. Right? And you're also being a poor example. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're falling apart because yeah. you're giving too much, then people say, "Oh, I better not give too much." Look at Lagaya; she's all falling apart. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. I am just like you just have so many you're doing so many beautiful extraordinary things I thank you so much for everything I'm glad you're here I encourage everyone to watch the guys TED talk Lagaya Birch you just Lagaya Birch TEDx it's an important conversation and um, yes I want to be involved in all your projects <laughs> well maybe not all of them but but I do thank you so much for thank everything you. that you do for so many people thank you for being here and Keep up the great work. Keep just showing up for yourself first and just showing up. Thank you. Thank you. So this has been the show Real Life Talks. This is about learning how to just show up for yourself and others and sometimes having hard conversations, but like today, having wonderful conversations and knowing that you can make a difference. So if you want to be empowered, if you want to be resilient, my call to action is always plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always bring your own tambourine to the party. Thanks. <laughs>